All right, so today we have a aerobic day. So I actually do my programming inside the Elite. So I'm, I'm opening up my True Coach app, checking out what we got today. Today I have a combination of conditioning. So today is all about aerobic capacity. It's about conditioning. I do have these days sprinkled in, even though I'm on a hypertrophy focused program, it's still really important to work on your conditioning because that is the fundamental, that is the base of your energy systems. And that's what allows us to have more effective energy systems and actually improve your recovery and performance during things like hypertrophy training. So even though my goal right now is to build muscle, we're still working on our metabolic conditioning to improve that area, to improve our performance. We have some running, we have some rowing, we have some biking, and we have some farmer's carries. Let's get into it. Right now I'm doing 400 meters at about 80% pace, which isn't an all-out sprint. It's sustainable, but it's at the higher end of sustainable. So it's at the higher end of my aerobic capacity. For me, it leaves me breathless because this is a weak point for me, but I think a lot of people neglect their conditioning. But if we look at the fundamentals, the base, what builds your foundation inside of your fitness level, your athletic performance, and your body's ability to utilize nutrients to support energy in recovery, it's using energy systems. It's metabolic conditioning. So in order to train this wide variety of energy systems so your body understands how to use the oxidative system, the glycolytic system, the anaerobic system, ATP, ATP, PC, there's all these different things happening in your body. Taking nutrients, fueling, recovering, performing. Neglecting this is neglecting working on your body's ability to do that. So for me, that means two to three times a week doing some conditioning. And I condition to improve my athletic ability, my aerobic capacity. That's gonna carry over into my body composition. It's gonna carry over to my strength. It's gonna carry over to my oxidative ability to recover between reps, between sets, between days in the gym. So even though I'm trying to build muscle, this is helping my performance in those muscle building workouts. So 400 meters run, about 200 meter walk, which unfortunately is up which means it's time for another 400 meter run. How long was that, that sprint? 400 meters, now I got 200 meter walk. Shout out Top Notch Nutrition. Pre-workout fuel in this training session. Slow pace, still moving. 200 meters of walking. It ends up being about a two minute run, two minute walk. Two minutes is beyond the ATP anaerobic zone. I'm not sprinting, but it's at the higher end of sustainable. So it's definitely gassing me, but that was my second set with that. So basically what I'm doing today is two of those 400 meter runs. Now, unfortunately, you can get on the bike. The same thing over here. Usually it takes way less time because the bike cranks it up. And then I'll finish on the rower. And then we're gonna finish with some carries. Just doing long distance farmer's walk. I'll tell you what too, this runner, curved treadmill lights up my hamstrings just from that full extension and this bent 
treadmill allowing me to really pick up while I run, you get like a glute and hamstring pump. Like my legs are just filling up. So I do upper body Monday, lower body Tuesday, upper lower Thursday, Friday. So sprinkling in some kind of conditioning is a great way to actually improve recovery versus me doing nothing at all. If I just be a couch potato, or I just sit at the office and just work all day and I don't move, I'm actually getting less oxygen to the limbs, less blood flow to the limbs, less fluid to the joints. So stuff like this, not only for me to rehab my knee, but this stuff is super helpful to actually improve recovery between sessions. So most people don't know, but I'm a handyman too. No directions needed. It all comes to me pretty naturally. Boom! And the assault bike is live. Oops, I'll take that back. Such a handyman. It's a love-hate relationship right here. Hamstrings, right up my quads. This one is again 400 meters, so I'm going for distance, not time. This one ends up being about half the time as that one. You can get a little bit further on this one, but that's also why I started with that. With conditioning, it's like if we're doing it for the purpose of becoming more metabolically conditioned, you want to work through inefficiency. So for me, I started with that because it takes me longer and it's, it requires the most skill. I've had two knee surgeries, so the mechanics of running in a good form, my gait, is more of something I have to think of than how to ride this or how to do that. So I kind of go over the order of operation. Most important for a skill standpoint of me to improve on. And then the last thing, finishing with the rower, just could be for me two things. One, that's probably the easiest one, so by the time I'm gas out, it's the easiest time to release. When I'm the most fatigued, that's the easiest one to continue it. And two, it's just in the row. All right, break's over. I don't know anybody who likes this, hold back. Last round of this, a rower, 400 meters, two minute break, 400 meters. Now I'll take another two minute break, then we're gonna go up here, we do farmer's walks down the turf. Again, more of a duration thing. So lighter load, three minutes nonstop of farmer's walks. One minute break, three rounds. on the rower. That was two, I'm done. Today's goal with sustainable cardio conditioning, I wanna go hard enough to, to work and have this output. Like I'm breathing hard, my oxidative system is working, but I could go do four more rounds of that if I wanted to. That's the whole point, trainability. Train, make it difficult and progressive, but if I'm smashing myself into oblivion with every conditioning session, I'm just frying my nervous system and I'll never be able to recover get the benefit out of it and continue training on other days. So now a lot of farmer's walks. This could actually be looked at, at as a form of like strongman conditioning because it's loaded carries and I'm moving, but it can also be worked, looked at as core stability, movement prep, GPP, active recovery. So there's a lot of ways that carries can be implemented. It's a lot of different positioning depending on what you need to work on. Carry, 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 carry. There's so many variations today. This week we're doing just Regular farms carries next week is dual rack, so grab kettlebells. Let's do it. The hardest part.
part about this is how cold these goddamn kettlebells get overnight. My hands are freezing and my traps are on fire. You want to get a good rear delt and trap builder, grab some 20 to 30 pound kettlebells and either walk for a mile or time yourself for three to five minutes nonstop. Three minutes on, one minute break. <sighs> Warm up my hands because that metal is cold. The goal here really is while I'm walking, my shoulders are pulled back. I'm not necessarily shrugging, but I'm definitely retracted. I'm trying to put my scapula in a very stable position. Tight grip. You don't necessarily want to think rib cage down like I usually will cue, but just tight core, everything solid. I'm just slightly picking up my knees while I walk. Slow pace, walking back and forth. You don't want to rush, you don't want to move too fast. It's really just about loading your body and moving with control. So, really good way to enforce good posture, really good way to build your traps. My traps are on fire. Really good way to build your forearm strength. Somehow that minute rest is already done. So, three more minutes. Workout is done. Oftentimes I like to pair condition or cardio with abs, core, GPP, things I need to work on. So typically what I will do is I'll put like some of my mobility, some of my stretching, some of the flexibility stuff, or direct ab or stability work like I just did with the farmer's walks with the conditioning. So today I started with conditioning from the most skill demanding thing, next going to the most mentally fatiguing thing, which is the assault bike, and then the last thing being the easiest for me to do personally, which is the rower. 400 meters each, two minutes in between each one, which is usually just a walking pace, some kind of active recovery. Three rounds of three minutes on, one minute off on the farmer's walk. Now I am done, the family's coming, Trav's girl, Trav's gonna work out, Tori's coming, my wife's coming, the baby's coming, everybody's coming, I'm gonna leave, they're gonna work out, I'm gonna go play with the baby. Okay. Can you say hi to the camera? I'd say so. <laughs> say hi. Can you say, say hi to the camera? Say hi, Trav. Hi, Uncle Trav. You being camera shy now? <laughs> Oh, what is he doing? I like your backpack. Ooh, mini, mini everything. Good. Fingernails painted, girl. Boots are nice. Looking good, <laughs> Doc Martens. Yeah, take that bag off. Show them what you're working with. Hi, <laughs> cutie. Good thing you're cute. <laughs> oh, thank you. You No wrong way. Go this way. Pull back. You do. Nope, wrong way. Here. Pull towards you. 